Kathy, I want to welcome you to our new home. Thank you. Your Majesty, please. Yes, Your Majesty. Open the gate. Open the gate. This is the original structure. Then they added on what year? This backside. I don't know. Now we can get up the steps, and we'll skip this step right here. And up this one. These are solid enough we can walk on. This is not too bad right in here. See a big, there's a big double beam that's supported those roof rafters in the middle. It's gonna be interesting to get that one down. That's probably the old original glass right there in that transom. When you can spread the weight out over several of them, it's not that bad. Right here's one to give away. And I was going along here, checking these out, see? See, bust them loose. And so I took a bigger bar and I stretched myself out through here, like this. And so I took a long arm. I got rid of the short one I was doing this with. So I took this long eight footer and went like that to test it. That gave away and the bar took me right down there. I probably landed on my chest and face. Now if I'd have kept this like this, like I had been doing like this, going down like this, but I took it like this, that was a mistake. See how that rafter give away? It was similar to that. It give away and I just went, how my body, how my fat body got through here, I don't know. Because this is still covered with stuff about this high. So the idea is to take all the derbis out, put the floor joist in the lower level, and put a floor on that, put the floor joist in here, and put a floor on it, then continue. to make it a lot safer. So when we fall, we don't have to fall so far. You do fall. This is the ornate plaster they used in the ceiling. This come from, this part must have come from this southwest corner. Now on the inside, we got one corner left that shows how this plaster was put up there and was hand molded. Then this rope type beading went all the way around the perimeter of the ceiling, out about two feet. And you can see how thick the plaster was here. Then they molded this on top of the plaster. So as, as we're pulling the thermos and junk out, we try to, uh, save some of these. So maybe put it back like it was one room. Now, how many rooms had this, I don't know. But it's kind of fun to dig around in this, and just like, just like the girls have found an old dish, and trying to wonder how old it is. Yay! We saved the old ink well. Remember when yeah, they had ink wells? Another ink well. There's another one over there, too. Oh, oh good. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Wash that. That would make two. They Wash give it. it to the dogs. Oh, they love it. Wash it up for yeah. Tucker. All right. And this is the this is the idea. The highlight is this part. This he really likes that. The arches. Everybody seems like it. This is the one we couldn't get into before. Okay. You couldn't get from this basement to the other basement without going up the steps right. and out there and back down. So this was the added on type. So I would say this basement is probably not as deep as the other basement. And uh, we dug down to see about the, the floor. And it's down here about three feet under this. So that'd make it about probably six foot basement. You can see how even when they added this other part on, they kept with the foundation, the native rock foundation. See how they did it? 
when I first got involved with it was uh, cleaning out the basement after Gary and, and Dad had cleaned out all the major appliances and stuff that was in the way. So that was my first experience with this bucking out all the debris in the basement. We couldn't get a conveyor, so we took out all the, the dirt. We leveled that down. We carried it out in five-gallon buckets. I imagine we carried out, so I don't know, two hard days worth of work of five-gallon buckets to get through. But it didn't have a choice. And so then that was leveled off where you could walk underneath it. Then we took out all the old floor joists. That would be in the, the main kitchen part. Took the floor joists out. Then we replaced those floor joists. Then we put a floor on subfloor. Then we went to the next story. I've had so many comments that people said, gosh, it just shocks me. It's so bad. It doesn't bother me a bit. Mm -hmm. I don't mind looking in there and see, well, there, they put a board in there for for a, a beam, see? And it, is it rotten? I, I just look at it that way. Mm -hmm. I don't look at it as a, it's falling down. You know, we've had a pretty good safety record despite our uh, little way we do things. I mean, it's just like walking in a cow pasture. You gotta look down all the time, you know, or you're gonna step in a pie, so. It's pretty hard to find somebody that can read your thoughts. Mm -hmm. you no, know? and if you have to have somebody that, oh, watch where you're stepping. Oh, we got to do that because I'm thinking ahead. We don't want to put that in now because we're gonna have to take it out to repair something else. That's why I don't have too much help. I don't want to be too anxious. I can work by myself. I just have to get along with myself, and that's really bad enough. <laughs> So I kind of like to do it myself, a lot of the stuff. Then, then I'll stack it up, push it aside, then when somebody comes over, it's obvious what to do. Just maneuver it around mm -hmm. and uh, pile it up. And somebody wants to come over and help, oh, we're gonna do this. We got something. Yeah. It's simple. Bring your golf clubs. <laughs> 